Jeff? Well, all right, Denny. Uh, Pat, let's, uh, Pat Remick uh, with uh, Greenside Inc. What should uh, homeowners be doing right now? What's, what's, uh, what's appropriate for getting out there today and, and uh, working in their lawns and so forth? Well, you know, this time of year, uh, people get excited about getting out and getting their turf looking good and getting the weeds taken care of, all that. Uh, I guess one thing to always keep in mind is that uh, it's going to be a long season. You, you can get out there too early and get too aggressive with the rakes and, uh, and the shovels. I, I think you kind of got to ease into it, let the ground firm up a little bit. We're, we're getting to the point that it's getting a lot better uh, than it did two weeks ago, but uh, just take your time and, and try to, uh, if you are raking and doing things in the turf, try to try to be gentle because you can cause some damage that may last the whole season if you're not uh, if you're not careful. But uh, anything to do with the turf and the gardens, uh, you know, if it's dry enough, feel free to uh, to start doing the uh, the weeding and, and uh, pruning on some shrubs if it has some some excess growth on it. Now is a good time to do that. So the the hostas and the you know the other uh, daylilies and things that are now you know wintered over there. They're, yep. The, do you cut that back now? Yeah. Is this the time of year? You know, grasses, uh, anything that's a, a perennial that has uh, you know a daylily or some type of grass, uh, the stuff that has uh, expired, mm-hmm. try to cut that off, and you try to stay right a little bit of on top of the green stuff coming up. Mm-hmm. When you cut the, uh, the the dead product off the top, that'll help promote what's underneath. It'll get more sunlight, more moisture to it, so that'll help the, the daylily uh, that's coming up now. Yeah, they started bit. sneaking up this week on us. I know I was out there, and I'm thinking, hey, Saturday, Sunday, it's going to be the weather today is perfect for this. And and now I'm like, geez, they already beat me to it. They're already growing. So it's uh, it you, will. you have to be pretty careful then, or do you, I? You know, you, you can cut too low. You can cut mm-hmm. into that green, and that will set them back a little bit. I don't think mm-hmm. it necessarily will, will kill them, but it's... It, uh, it isn't good. So they will grow through some of that stuff that you have cut off. So mm-hmm. uh, just be careful with that and not get too aggressive. But you can certainly do that. And if your spireas need a little pruning or dogwoods, mm-hmm. uh, you know, feel free to take some of that off. And, and well, now this is the time of year, too, to get our pre-emergence down with the, yep. um, you know, for crabgrass and whatnot. And I know it's Absolutely. been wet. No, I, I was the guy that went out, I told you just before the show. Had mine whole yard. I was all excited, got ahead of the game, and then it snowed a foot on us. And it, uh, <laughs> yep. I don't know if it's diluted. How do you know? I mean, can is there a test that we can take, or is there? How do you know if you've got enough fertilizer on there and it didn't wash away? Is there? Well, a- you know, I, I think it's pretty hard to tell. A lot of times, uh, the fertilizer you buy these days have colors to it, uh, so you can go back out and look uh, underneath the grass plant to see if you still got some of that. Because most of it's got uh, a slow release to it, so I'm, I would think for the most part it's pretty good. It's when you get that six inches of rain and you know two yeah. hours that it could wash some of that away. So if we but, don't see granulars, it might not. But I right. see, I hate to burn it out, you know, and then you, you always hear the, if you don't do it now, you can't uh, catch up later with, with right. you know, crabgrass. So, But, you know, even, well, <clears throat> crabgrass is probably a little more specific, but other weeds, you can you can put pre-emergence down in the middle of summer, mm-hmm. and pre-emergent, pre-emergent weed killer will take care of the weeds that haven't came up quite yet. Gotcha. So you can certainly redo it again uh, a little bit later down the road. What about the, the water features that are out there? This is the uh, time of year that we start working on those two, and, yep. and how early, or how late, you know, is or magic date for putting the outdoor exotics out there, the palm trees or the whatever you want to put around your patio? When uh, when can we start doing that stuff? You know, a lot of that stuff is based on temperature of the soil and the atmosphere. Who knows? I mean, uh, maybe two weeks from now we get 80-degree temperatures and we're mm-hmm. fine. Uh, right now it's still kind of chilly, and some of those uh, plants are a little susceptible to to mm-hmm. frost or anything else. And who knows? Maybe we get some freakish cold front that comes through and it's 22 degrees again. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, it's a long season. I wouldn't be in a, in a big hurry to get some of that stuff out. And you guys have been, now obviously this is the winter season when you guys are doing a lot of your estimating and you're preparing for your clients' projects. What was the number one project that you guys think will be happening this spring that's kind of a new trend? Is there anything new or is it kind of the same old stuff or what are you seeing? Uh, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of areas where there's going to be turf damage that people may need to do some some side replacement. Mm-hmm. Uh, some plants are going to be dead because uh, uh, of, you know, just the, the tough winter we were in. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, we've been getting calls across the board with different different ideas and different concerns. So pricing pretty much the same as it was last year for like projects or is there, yeah. you know, they jumped up a little? I know Not everything really. else has kind of jumped uh, a little. You know, the biggest cost that we have in our industry is, is petroleum, you know, diesel mm-hmm. and all that stuff because everything runs off of that for the most part. But uh, I think for the, for the upcoming season, I don't think you'll see a, a heck of a big difference in price at all. I think it'll stay about the same. 
Okay, so if I'm, I'm okay now, coming from the real estate mind, <laughs> trying to get houses ready for market and and trying to do some curb appeal ideas. I know you're always an expert with that. Um, what would I budget for um, to have a nice? And I mean, obviously, this is a million ways to answer this question, but an average house. Um, what could I budget for curb appeal? I mean, what should I? Is it is it thousands or is it hundreds or what do we have well, to spend to get the house ready outside? You know, it, like you said, it depends on how much uh, maintenance has been performed on it. But I would say on an average, uh, I think if you had a thousand dollar budget, you could probably get a lot of that done. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if nothing else, you could get the high impact areas done for sure. Uh, in a bigger place, maybe you, uh, or on a smaller place, maybe you could get further back into the uh, the secondary areas. But for most homes, I would say a thousand bucks, you'd be pretty well covered. Okay. And then with regards to all the pine trees that are burnt this year, I mean, I know everybody listening here probably has the same problem I do. Every pine that I had, beautiful or you know exotic or whatever, they're all burnt. Where do we go? Well, how yeah. do we how do we address that? You know, it, it's hard to say right now. Give it a little bit of time. Sometimes they'll get color back to them. Um, We'll know here in the next uh, month or two uh, as they start to get life back into their mm-hmm. veins. Uh, you'll know b- uh, better here pretty shortly what, what's going to make it. What's is not. there a needle check? I mean, like if we go up there and grab the needle and pull on it, is that something that's going to give us a sign that, it, you know, maybe we should prune that back? Or I, we... I would say here, you know, it, it's still pretty early yet. The ground hasn't warmed up enough to the point where the, a lot of these trees and shrubs are really uh, jumping with joy that spring is here yet because mm-hmm. it's just been too chilly. Uh, wait about a month or so, and if it's still needles are dropping, then you know you may have to prune that off. Or you have spray paint them green and yeah. color good. <laughs> Say, for those just joining us, this is our usual real estate show, but we've we've invited Pat Remick back. And that's why if folks just turning on the radio, they might think, hey, you extended the garden show. <laughs> well, we kind of have. And uh, we like to invite uh, Pat from time to time to talk about it, uh, those various issues because it is important. And I wanted to ask you kind of what, uh, what, what Andy asked you about uh, – uh, the tough winter, we've had a lot of the evergreens because we've had a lot of calls about the browning of these things. Yep. And uh, can you trim some of that off? Or you said it's maybe a little too early. To I, I think so. And a lot of that browning is, is from just being dried out with the, with the ah, winds and the sure. cold. I mean, it was as tough a winter as we can all remember. Uh, but in a month or so from now, we're going to really know for sure where we're at with what's going to make it, what's not. At that point in time, if it's still brown, trim it back. <laughs> Does, I was just going to quick. Uh, yeah. bur, does burlap make a difference? I've seen other people yeah. wrap burlap, and that yep. uh, seems to be. Is that well? The... That'll help hold the moisture in because what happens is mm-hmm. with that wind and everything that's happened, it just dries everything out so much. And the more it dries out, the colder it gets. It just causes that branch to you know. To so die. it's not necessarily a sunburn. I always thought it was like a sunburn, like the uh, sun was hitting it and baking the you know. And when that, it was... it, that's a contributing factor. Okay. It's okay. just like smooth bark trees. You can get sun scalding because in the wintertime, the the sun will heat up that outside bark mm-hmm. and it'll crack it open. Sure. That's what they call sun scalding. But hmm. evergreens, not so much. No. All right.